Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition. And every time I see something like this, I get really excited because DC decided to collect all of the George Perez Wonder Woman in omnibus format. And they followed through and completed the run. So here I am to talk about the three Omnis that make up the George Perez Wonder Woman. This is gonna be an overview. And while I look at the inside, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about each book. So please stay tuned. Well, if you're OCD, just like I am, I'm sure you already know what I do not like about these spines. And that's the lack of uniform because of the stupid DC logo right there. Not that big of a deal, but let's look at volume one first. Here we have that gorgeous cover by George Perez from issue one. It did have a wraparound, so we'll get to the inside here. Um, let's look at what the inside looks like. Another gorgeous piece of work by George Perez. Let's look at this in all its glory. Now the first volume did have a little bit of tight binding and volumes two and three don't seem to have that issue. And that is gorgeous. So much attention to detail. George Perez is still the man after all these years. So let's see what we have here. This is volume one. And this is what started it all. This is right after Crisis on Infinite Earths, and this is the for introduction by George Perez, written in 2003. I don't think, I think these were collected in trade paper back, and that's probably where that introduction comes from. Here's the full cover to issue one. Um, so yes, after Crisis on Infinite Earths, they decided to retell the origin of Wonder Woman again. So starting over from scratch, DC decided to get George Perez and Lane Wayne on that task. And this collects the first 24 issues in annual number one. And it's pretty fascinating how they were able to combine many of the original elements that made up Wonder Woman and weave them into, uh, I guess, a relevant uh, story for all ages. And not just Perez and Lane Wayne alone. There's also Greg Potter probably wrote most of the dialogue in volume one here but it's really cool how they were able to do that and the story begins with the tone of the amazons being crushed by men and therefore not trusting men because they were violently killed by them so it's time to move on and create our own society lots of greek gods make an appearance hermes aries and he mixes the old characters with new characters too like julia and her daughter, Vanessa Catapillis, I think. And then Etta Candy and Steve Trevor. And, oh, yeah. Poor, poor Vanessa. What ends up happening to you in the hands of Phil Jimenez later on? Yeah. And there's a gorgeous artwork. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about George Perez's artwork. And what I do have to say about this volume one, though, it took me quite a while to get through. And looking at it now, I can see why. It seems like we're now current comic books do about probably five to six at most panels per page. I mean, here's like 14 to 15 panels per page and each one with dialogue. And it's not like he's cramming the art into each panel because it actually makes sense sequentially. And he's able to put just crazy amount of details in each cloud, each cigarette smoke, the bullets that are coming out of the guns. Just look at that page. Just look at the dialogue. And then look at the panel and the layout. It's just amazing. You don't find artists that do that these days, hardly. Phenomenal. But as I was saying, that's what probably took me a long time to get through this book. Because it is kind of dialogue heavy. And there's so many panels in each page. There's Ares. I love his design of Ares. Now, this is a time after he left New Teen Titans when he was working with Marf Wolfman. And he started co-plotting and writing this himself. So I think it's awesome. I really enjoyed it. It's not, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite Wonder Woman runs. I think it is important to read. It, it's up there definitely with Man of Steel and Batman Year One. But for some reason, I didn't enjoy this volume as much as I did when I was younger. I'm not sure why. But that all changed in volume two. Now, this is definitely not George Perez. That is an Arthur Adams. This must be the annual. Yeah, that is 
definitely Arthur Adams. Man, I love that man's artwork. And that is John Bolton. Different artist. So this must be the annual right here. Back up from the annual. And let's look and see what the extras are, if there's any in Volume 1. Now, as far as that spine, I don't know if there's been a second printing. Here we go. It's a gallery. Gorgeous George Perez artwork. There's that inside of the dust jacket what it looks like um i don't know if they did fix the spine and the later printing um but i do know that the price went up from 75 dollars which was what this cost the first printing of this book to 99 dollars, which is what on most omnis cost and here are the covers to the trade paperbacks and then the biographies of the creators let's move on to volume two here we have volume two cover with the spine that you saw earlier and then the back cover let's remove that dust jacket see what the inside looks like oh how sad DC come on yeah I do like the way that they're embedded in there but that's that's it okay forgot about that so looks like one of my custom binds um looks like we don't get a forward this time and we kick off the story with a crossover, Invasion, First Strike Extra. So this collects Wonder Woman 25 through 45 and annual number two. And as I mentioned earlier, And I think, to me, this is where the story kind of picks up. Maybe it was because she was more involved with other DC characters instead of just hanging out with Steve Trevor and Greta or having a crossover with Superman. The gods started to show themselves. What really kept me reading the first volume was George Perez's artwork. It was beautiful. But maybe because he stepped back and let other artists take over, like Jill Thompson or Chris Marion in this volume. He focused on his writing. Maybe I enjoyed it more because of that. I don't know. This one read a lot quicker. It was still dialogue heavy, but not as heavy as volume one. Yeah, definitely not as heavy as volume one. He is still doing the covers. That gorgeous detailed cover. Okay, I kind of did miss his art. And in this, he's mainly doing the writing all by himself. I know Mindy Newell stepped in every once in a while to help out with the script, but it's mainly just George Perez writing it by himself. Yeah, Chris Marion, that's the other guy. I think I may have called him the wrong name earlier. Such a badass, God, George Perez. Just a man, I've always been a fan of his stuff. Especially when it was inked by Terry Austin. Those two, Terry Austin inking him and John Byrne, Anyway, sorry, that's another story. Now we got into the early, early Tom Grumet years. Yeah, this is Tom Grumet, right before he took over the New Teen Titans book. This is another guy that I really enjoy his artwork. He's a fast artist. Don't know why he doesn't have a monthly book anymore. I think the last book I saw him working on was the X-Men Forever series. It's got a lot of Cheetah in here, and looks like a lot of it takes place in Egypt, and I think it's got the return of Silver Swan in this particular volume too and there's Etta back with Trevor and all these volumes by the way are still in print you can still find them at outlets like Amazon or in stock trades or Forbidden Planet <laughs> I'm not sure what this is I don't remember this but this is pretty cute artwork yeah I think it was this volume that made me really care about Wonder Woman as a character I really wanted to know more about her and didn't want to stop reading them and part of the reason why I kept going with the series after George Perez left, because I would have quit if I was just following his artwork and his writing. He really made me care about her and her cast of characters. Not just the gods like Hermes and Ares, but also Etta Candy and Steve Trevor. And Julia and Vanessa Cap Capitellis. So he's still mixing in Greek mythology with new technology. This is the Marin and stuff right here. Yeah, about the only negative thing I can say about this volume, 
because I mean you already know what you're getting you're not getting George Perez's artwork just getting his writing is the lack of the wraparound cover yeah there's this is when Mindy Newell started coming on board as the script writer here's some more art and let's see what we got in the back here looks like just material from um, one of those DC Universe books of the I don't think what they were called the who's who yeah who's who Now let's move on to volume three. So here we have volume three, cover, spine, and the back cover. I love that image. Not very keen on the cover though. And, oh, come on DC. Oh well, I already read enough in volume two. So you know what you're getting here. Now let's look at the inside. Once again, the retail price of this is $100. Table of contents, no intro. Uh, I remember this story. It's uh, about one of Vanessa's friends committing suicide. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful story. Pretty sad. And it hits right into your soul. Now we're just beautiful. Um, so um, let's talk about, once again, George Perez just writing it. Not drawing any of it except for the covers. And he is joined by Mindy Newell again for some of the script. Most of the stuff is drawn by Jill Thompson with Colleen Doran and Cynthia Martin. And actually, I'll take it back. George Perez did draw some of this, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Troya, Donna Troy, makes an appearance here. And this ends up collecting the remaining issues by George Perez. Wonder Woman 46 through 62. And then it's got the miniseries, which was the big crossover at DC right before Armageddon 2001. It was... um. War of the Gods, that's what it was called. And it's got the stories from George Perez from Wonder Woman 168 and 169 and the uh, issue 600, which came later in that gorgeous cover. So this is where George Perez drew some of the stuff in here along with Sergio Gones and Chris Bacciallo and Jill Thompson. This is the big 50th anniversary issue where a bunch of artists help him out. About the only thing I'm disappointed in, I am a big fan of Jill Thompson's artwork during this time. I really like it. I love her little ma manga kitty stuff too. That she draws like little, it's called the little dreaming, little Sandman characters, little death. But her stuff here was amazing. About the only thing lacking from these books, I would say, is that Superman crossover from the annuals, the Action Comics annuals. It was like a crossover and they didn't include it in here. They included it in the Superman Man of Steel by John Byrne trade paperbacks, but for some reason not in here. I am not sure why DC Collected Editions decided to do that, but it's a damn shame. But if you own those trade paperbacks, man, you have the whole story. Man, I have more issues of Wonder Woman. And there is War of the Gods, issue one. Now, I believe George Perez did the layouts for this. Yeah, it looks like his stuff. Cersei. Um, and Cynthia Martin. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia Martin is credited as the finished art. So this was the big crossover where Greek gods and Roman gods are fighting like their counterparts. It was an okay storyline. I feel like Perez was denied to use some of the characters because they were going to be part of a bigger crossover for their Armageddon in 2001. What's interesting is that it collects only the Wonder Woman issues that have War of the Gods, of course, because it was an ongoing crossover. Even though it says Part 11, eh, the story itself still makes sense. You don't need the other parts to enjoy it. It wasn't the greatest crossover, but it was pretty entertaining for those issues. I'm actually surprised they didn't go the route of an omnibus for War of the Gods and release it as another George Perez story. Here we have more of... War of the Gods. Yeah, it's kind of like his last hurrah. And here we have more gorgeous Jill Thompson artwork. It's kind of similar style that she was using when she was doing issues of Sandman. And the final issue of Wonder Woman by George Perez. And after this came the William Messer and Loeb's run, which I'm glad I stuck with the character to read because William Messer and Loeb's happens to be one of my favorite Wonder Woman writers. 
and also introduce Mike Deotado Jr. to American audiences and Artemis. Here is, I think this is the Paradise Lost storyline that Phil Jimenez did, and then this is just the George Perez stuff in the back of it, if I'm not mistaken. And then his storyline, which was included in, yeah, this is the Phil Jimenez stuff, was included in the Wonder Woman 600 issue. This issue right here. I believe this here is written by Gail Simone. Yeah. And then we have the extras here. Once again, stuff from the Who's Who in the DC Universe and pinups. It's a really cool picture of Cheetah. That looks like Maguire and Perez. So maybe Perez inked Kevin Maguire's art. And Dr. Psycho. Or Silver Swan. I really like that pinup. That's Kevin Nolan. It looks like Adam Hughes, like old Adam Hughes art. And here's some more stuff. Yeah, this is probably from issue 50. And here we are at the end. There's Toya. That's a really good picture. I don't like that. That's Chris Browse, I think. And then the biographies of the creators. And that's it. That pretty much wraps up everything about this run right here. Uh, there are other comic books where George Perez got to draw Wonder Woman, but everything that he did within the run has been collected here. I love this treatment. I wish they would give William Messner Loeb's the same treatment. That's why I custom bound those books. So come on, DC, these books sell, so keep them coming. Give us the Greg Rucka run in omnibus format. Sorry, I'm just making a list here. Um, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that like button. And don't forget to check out our weekly show, which usually comes out every Thursday. And we also have another live show at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday night, where two new readers get to read something for the very first time, and I reread a book I read a while back. Again, this was Omar, and thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day.